I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about what other issues will dominate in the fourth quarter. Now, some think investors need to find long-term growth opportunities that work even when the economy stalls out a little bit. And where might those investments be? Now, Jay, I've talked to you about this. You have some strong thoughts on this caveat here. Uh, Jay runs several big ETFs in the technology space. You run the robotics ETF. Uh, you run a nice cloud computing ETF. We've had you on to talk about that before. Uh, they've sort of been sidelined uh, this quarter as ma macroeconomics, global issues kind of come to the fore. Uh, but can they make a difference at all in the fourth quarter if things calm down? I think they can. I mean, first of all, we're seeing strong returns in some very kind of traditionally boring asset classes like, you know, TLT and gold, right? So once that starts to fade off, people are going to be looking for where are future returns going to be coming from. Just last week, the OECD cut their global growth uh, expectations from 3.2% right. to 2.9%. That 3% level is kind of a very you know, important mental barrier. But that means there's not a lot of growth out there. So which parts of the economy can continue to grow? We think it's disruptive technologies that are going to take market share from existing processes. That could be robotics that are now you know, fully automating systems within manufacturing. That could be cloud computing, which is introducing you know, tons of new innovative software into the uh, yes. enterprise space. But there's a lot of growth out there if you look more focused in technology. And Tim, does this thematic investing concept still make a lot of sense? Or are we still going to be buffered around by, no, by no, global macro that, events? And this is not going to be that important. Uh, it's more like intellectual discussions about you know, how the world's going to change rather than actual investment issues for the fourth quarter. Right. Well, I'm an emerging markets investor by background. So I've always taken the view that you can invest in a bad neighborhood, having said that. So in other words, if, if you're seeing global cyclicality headwinds, you're going to see it across a number of different ways to play that and express it. Um, but if you look at, you know, think of all the headwinds we had in the third quarter that we're now discussing the highs and lows of. I mean, and semiconductors effectively outperformed the, the rest of the, they outperformed triple Qs, they outperformed the S&P. Uh, and that's an environment where you would make an argument this is one of the most cyclical parts of investing. These are some of the most innovative companies in the world that are exposed yeah. to more advanced technologies. And they're not just, you know, the, the DRAM chips and some of the, the commoditized parts of, of that belt. It's so almost I think you have to. It's almost growth at any cost at this point. When the world loves growth. Semiconductors are the fir first and foremost play on global growth. And the world hasn't given up on growth yet. That's what it tells me, the, the outperformance of the semiconductors, at least. No, and you, and you see that in the China trade talks, obviously, where people are desperate for growth. Um, I think the biggest you know, forward-facing risk for all investors is technological disruption. And you, know, you see that in the trade talks and people's yearning for something to get done um, so that you know, we can get back to a situation where you know, markets are growing or, or economies are growing again. Yeah. Again, you want to watch that SMH, uh, which is uh, the, the broadest diversified uh, uh, ETF on semiconductors that are out there.